Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm Emmanuel, I'm a Boeing 737 pilot and a member of PMDG's tech team. In today's video we will discuss the auxiliary fuel system in the Boeing 737-900ER and partially also in the Boeing business jets, with a focus however being on the 900ER. Now, the 737-900ER as part of the differences over the 737-900 features two optional additional fuel tanks that can be installed in the front and aft cargo hold. Now, looking at the airplane from the side, we will quickly discuss why they are in the location they are before going into the cockpit details. Now, one additional tank can be installed in the forward cargo hold, just in front of the center tank, and the other one can be installed in the aft cargo hold, just behind the center tank, thereby providing minimal differences to the center of gravity movements when those parts are used. Now let's go ahead and go into the cockpit to see the difference that those tanks make. You can select the auxiliary fuel system on the fuel options page in the 737. So that is menu, PMDG setup, aircraft, equipment and then page number 11. And in here if you sit in a 737-900ER you can select the auxiliary fuel system. If this is grayed out, chances are you have loaded a 900 and not a 900ER because the system is not available in the 900s. You have the choice between having either a single auxiliary fuel tank, which is then in the aft part of the forward cargo hold, or you can have a dual auxiliary fuel system, which puts an additional tank into the forwardmost part of the aft cargo hold as shown from the outside. Let's quickly have a look into the differences in the amount of fuel you can carry. Right now the aircraft is equipped with pounds, so you can see you can add roughly 3,500 pounds in the forward aux tank and roughly 2,800 in the aft tank. If we convert this one into kilograms, you can see we are looking at roughly 1,600 in the forward hold and 1,300 in the aft hold. Added together, this gives us approximately 2,800 kilograms of extra fuel that we can load up in the airplane and seeing the average fuel usage of the 737-900 per hour at normal cruising speeds is approximately 2.3, 2.4 tons, we end up with approximately an hour of extra flight time if we have both tanks installed thereby giving us approximately 400 nautical miles extra range over the, st the standard 900 aircraft. Be aware that not all 900 ERs are equipped with the auxiliary fuel system, so if you want to be sure if you have the system installed, you actually need to check the flight deck for the additional switches. Now, here's something to be aware of. Most Auxiliary fuel systems are actually a separate installation that has not been provided by Boeing but by a third party company. And this means that you don't have any fuel indications in the cockpit of the 737-900ER for the fuel contained in the AUX tanks. With the exception of the FMC telling you the total amount of fuel that you have on board. And if you have the fuel totalizer gauge installed, you will see the quantity of the AUX tanks in the total gauge down here but you will not get an additional indication of the fuel quantity up here. Now, this is different from the Boeing business jets that you might have flown with previous versions of the PMDG 737, which had an additional auxiliary fuel panel installed on the main panel in front of the captain and the first officer. Now, this is not the case with the 737-900ER, so your only way of monitoring the total amount of fuel that you have on board the airplane is either through the FMC, mostly on the progress page, or through the um, fuel totalizer quantity down here. However, be aware, if you don't have the fuel total display installed, then your only source of monitoring the amount of fuel on board in the auxiliary tanks is the FMC. Now. With all of this discussed, let's get a little bit more into the differences that we can find in the cockpit with the AUX tank system installed. We're going to start on the overhead panel. And we can see that above the electrical panel, we have the auxiliary fuel transfer panel now. And on here we have four switches, two for the forward tank and two for the aft tank. On top of that, we get an additional panel on the upper rightmost part on the aft overhead panel, which is the auxiliary fuel panel. 
Now, before we are going to discuss what each of those switches are doing, let's quickly discuss the theory and how these systems are operating. And we'll start with a little bit of basics. The aux fuel system basically adds an additional fuel tank in the cargo hold. So, cargo space is used up to install a fuel tank and thereby provide more range. The way these systems work is that on the refueling panel on the wing of the aircraft you have a switch that you can use in order to transfer fuel into those auxiliary tanks when refueling the airplane. Now once that fuel is in the aux tanks, when the center tank fuel quantity falls below a predetermined value, a switch is triggered which then starts transfer of the fuel from the aux tanks into the center tank purely by using the cabin pressure of the aircraft. A backup system is installed that allows fuel to be transferred using engine bleed air. However, there are no pumps installed in this system and that is the reason why you are not going to find any pump switches on the fuel panel over here. There have been some older versions of 737s, mostly the classics, which had auxiliary fuel tanks as well as an option and they actually had pumps installed and thereby had an additional set of switches on the fuel panel. So if you do happen to find any pictures online, then don't think that PMDG has forgotten to add, the, to add those pumps, but indeed they are not used in the modern day system in the 737NGs anymore. Okay, let's go over to the switches that we have available then. We have the auxiliary fuel transfer switches, which basically have an auto and an off position. And those are basically kept in auto all the time, because in the auto mode, an additional computer that gets installed in the forward cargo hold together with the auxiliary fuel system is going to automatically initiate the transfer of the fuel from the auxiliary tanks into the main tank when the fuel quantity in the main tank falls below a predetermined value. Now, once that is complete, the system is going to switch off again and then fuel is going to be used from the center tank of the airplane through the normal fuel feeding system until the center tank quantity falls below that predetermined value again, which then again opens the valves from the auxiliary tanks, and thereby the cycle basically continues until the auxiliary tanks are empty. Now, should the cabin pressurization not be adequate, aka should you have a decompression, or for maintenance reasons be flying without a pressurized cabin, then there is an additional backup system available which allows the airplane to use fuel by using engine bleed air to pump the fuel from the aux tanks into the main tanks. And that is what we can do on the panel up here, which basically overrides the default system using cabin pressure to using bleed air. Now that is pretty much how you operate that system in the 737-900ER. Let's now switch over to the Boeing business jet for a second to have a look what things look like in here. Be aware that the BBJ and the BBJ2 come with the 737-700 and 800 packages respectively from PMDG and there is no BBJ included in the 737-900 package. So, for this video, we are sitting in the 737-700 BBJ right now, and I have equipped it with an additional set of nine external fuel tanks, adding a total of approximately 11,000 kilograms of extra fuel. Or if you want to go back in a pound, it's going to add approximately 25 and a half thousand pounds of extra fuel. A difference between the BBJ and the 737-900ER is that we have this additional auxiliary fuel panel fitted in front of the captain's and in front of the first officer's positions. Now, on here we can actually see how much fuel is loaded into the forward and the aft tanks. And this panel is also going to give us an alert light once the aux fuel tanks are empty. And that is our indication to switch off the pumps 
or rather the auxiliary fuel transfer switches, not pumps, my mistake. So, in the 900, however, there is no such light installed. So, let's summarize. What do we need to understand about the 737's auxiliary fuel system? First of all, it is an optional system that is not installed in every airplane. It is commonly found, however, on the 737-900ER plane. The fuel quantity, if you are sitting in a 900ER, can only be seen on the fuel quantity indicating system or in the flight management computer. And if you are sitting in a Boeing business jet, you also have the additional auxiliary fuel panel up here. Now, operation of the system is basically fully automated in that you as the pilot don't have to touch anything. However, it is important to understand that should you have a depressurization, you will have to flick the system to use engine bleed air rather than cabin pressurization. Refueling of the system, if you use PMDG's refueling system, is also fully automatic, so there is nothing that you as the pilot have to do in order to utilize the system. When the system is actually in use, you, you are going to see the center tank fuel quantity being used normally until it reaches a certain predefined value. And once that value is reached, fuel is going to be transferred from the auxiliary fuel system into the center tank until the center tank quantity reaches another predetermined value. And then center tank fuel is going to be used once again. This cycle basically repeats into infinity until the auxiliary fuel tanks are empty. Now, be aware that if you're using the fuel totalizer display like we do right now, so if you use the um, standard display, then you are not going to get any indication of auxiliary fuel on the upper display unit at all, but only in the FMS. But if you use the fuel totalizer, then be aware that on the three different separate indicators up here, you are only going to see the wing tank and the center tank fuel, but not the auxiliary tank fuel. The auxiliary tank fuel, however, is included in the total value that you find below the separate indicators. So this is going to be it for today's video. I would like to thank you very much for watching and hope that you have learned something. If you did, then do let me know in the comments below. I would like to thank you very much for watching. And if you want to support the channel, you can do so either through the Buy Me A Coffee link that you can find in the video description below or by becoming a channel member where you can get exclusive early access to new videos and in first class membership even the ability to request your own videos. Thank you very much for watching and I'm looking forward to see you all flying the BBJ or the 900ER hopefully very soon.